Welcome everybody. How are you now? Have you had lunch? Re energized? Cool. I'm, I'm glad that you are here. So let's start talking about microservice with Kubernetes, Docker, and Jenkins. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Rafael Benevides. I work for Red Hat as a director of developer experience. If you get in, want to get in touch with me, you can send me an email. My email address is benevides at redhat.com. Or you can also find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Rafa Bene. I guess it's much more easier. I'm, I'm always living there at the uh, Twitter. Uh, I've been working with Java for quite a while, more than 15 years, I guess. So it's even more a pleasure to be here at Java, at Java One. So before we start in talking about Kubernetes, microservices, and Jenkins, I'd like to invite everybody that wants to know more about MicroProfile that, that was just released. There will be um, lunch Thursday on 11.30. There will be an, uh, that's will be, that will be a good opportunity to know about what is MicroProfile and what are the this initiative and how it relates to relates to Java E and all this kind of uh, knowledge and information. And also, I'd like to invite everybody here to join the developers.redhat.com, which is a portal there that we can find resources for developers. Like you can have a free access to products, so you can have fr uh, free access to ebooks, blog posts, a lot of information as well. So let me start here asking, who ever ever run a Java application inside container, inside Docker? And now I have another question. Why did you do that if Java is supposed to be portable among virtual machines? Perfect. So let me reply his answer. <laughs> Java is portable among virtual machines, but sometimes you need to end all, all another things like the application server with your pre-configured uh, thread pool with uh, environment variables, data sources, everything else. So we have a lot of advantage when you are running a uh, Java application inside containers. But uh, I'd like to also introduce you to Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a project from Google. Google has a lot of expertise with containers. Since 2008, they are deploying almost 2 millions of containers per, per week. So even before containers become popular, like since 2014, Google is working with containers. But they use an internal project called Borg. And what they did is get that knowledge and release an open source project called, called Kubernetes. And it's one of the most popular projects inside GitHub. You can see that, uh, that there are a lot of contributors, a lot of commits, and even more GitHub stars. And Red Hat is the second top contributor of this project. Uh, I want to show you this application. Is It was a, an application that I presented when I was talking specifically about Kubernetes. And this application uses two microservices. One is the guestbook service that uh, is a microprofile application using Wildfly Swarm. And another thing that we will do is instead of deploying a pre-built image of Hello World service, we will build one from scratch and deploy that using a Jenkins pipeline. Okay, this is the overview of the application. But of course, we will have a chance to review how would would we run a Kubernetes uh, microservice. So let me start here this demo. Let me increase, of course, the font size. Okay, so again, 
let's get the our guest book uh, guest book service source. The first thing that we need to do with a um, uh, Java application is run the Maven package, right? I have here a shell script that will run the the, the Maven package, and then after that, we'll build the Docker image for us. So what it it's doing now is that after it created a WAR file, it will get use the Wildfly Swarm plugin and package the WAR file together with Wildfly and create a fetch jar, the guestbook service swarm fetch jar that contains uh, the Wildfly Swarm. You just need to run a Java manager, uh, Java dash dash jar in this Wildfly Swarm and it will uh, start the application for you. And something that I also did is use a Docker file to create this image, as you can see, this uh, this parent image just has the Open JDK, the JDK eight. I specify the environment variable to limit the heap memory, um, and also I added the fetch jar inside my my image. So I have this image now in my in my internal Docker registry. Since I have here people that have uh, have worked with Docker, how would we run this image with Docker? Can who can can give me a tip? Suppose that I don't don't know Docker. Let's see Docker run dash d to create a detached process. It's also good practice to give the container a name. So it would be guest book service and then the name of the image, right? Yeah, that's what you usually do to run a, a Docker process. But now I want to run that using Kubernetes. To run Kubernetes, it's almost the same. But instead of running Docker run, it's kubectl run. The second per parameter is already the name. And then you can specify here the image with the image parameter. But you can do something more. Let me open here the OpenShift console. This is the MySQL instance that I have already running here. I can specify the numbers of replicas here straight from the console. I want to run two replicas of this image of when I do that it automatically created a replication controller as you can see here replication controller guest book service created with two pods running of course each one of these pods has its own IP address I need to create an abstraction to be able to connect to those service with Kubernetes, I can do that running kubectl. I, w I want to expose that replication controller that's called guest book service. Using the port 8080 because it's a Wildfly container that runs on port 8080. When I d did that, it created a service. Well, we can see these two replicas running here. I can uh, scale it up and down with these two arrows. I can see the pods running here, or I can do a kubectl get pods. You can see it's both the same name, A1, XXC, PL, HG0. I can follow the logs of each one of these pods. They, are, they have been started. And we can see that the replication controller will always keep two replicas running. So for example, if I open the, the bash inside this container, I'm now inside the container, I can see the Java process here. And suppose that I 
kill this process or this process died for any reason. So as you can see, it, it, it crashed my terminal and the replication controller created ano another, restarted the container for me. So again, Q1, look here, it restarts the container and I always have two replicas running. So this is one of the ways that I can do to run uh, a, a process inside a Kubernetes process inside my cluster. But on, honestly, I prefer to keep all the, f the resources declared inside YAML files. So instead of typing kubectl run, the name of the image, the name of the port, I can, for example, here specify everything that I need in a YAML file. I can store that YAML file in GitHub. I can have multiple people working. I can uh, have track the version, track the changes. So what I will do now is deploy the, uh, the front end for that application. Again, the Hello World service, the second service, we will de deploy that via a CI CD pipeline. So let's create it here. To create using a file, I will use kubectl crea create dash f, the name of the file, which is frontend rc for the replication controller, and the frontend dash service for the service. When I did that, I have now the frontend and the guestbook service running. Now, I need to expose that to outside of, of OpenShift. I can do that running, uh, creating a route. So what I will do is get this IP address and I will give a name of Java1 plus this host here that I have a, a DNS pointing to this host. Once that I create, I can click on the host name and finally I see the application running. I know that the da database is working because it returned uh, this record here, this registry re here from the database. And you might ask how the application, how this guestbook service knows where the database is? Well, let me open again the, the bash. All the cluster, uh, all the pods inside Kubernetes w uses a software-defined network. So if I ping in the name of the service, like for example, ping MySQL, it will resol resolve to the name of the service. Or I can uh, use an environment variable because when, one, when I create a service, environment variables will be also created to point to the IP address and the port of the exposed service. So that's how it knows. The same thing I can do with, for example, the front end. Get pods, kubectl, exec, the name of the pod, bash. I can grab the guest book. So I this is how the front end knows where the guestbook service is running. So this application is very simple, but when I, because it will post the message to, to the guestbook service, it will restore in the, in the database, but it will also try to run a hello world. So welcome everyone. When I click submit, there is a there error because the hello world is not running but the me message was stored in inside the guestbook service. We need now to create the hello world service. What I will do to create the hello wor world service is use Fabricate. So let me open here Fabricate. Fabri Fabricate first is a microservice platform. It's an open source project that integrates Jenkins, Nexus, um, a, Git, a Git server. 
So let me. My browser froze. Let me force quit and open it again. Restore. Okay. Close this page. Close this one. And let's open. Fabricates. Um, admin. Admin. Here in the Fabricate console, I can have multiple teams because each each team can work with e your own set of microservice. So you'll get here the default team. Now this team will create the Hello World service. I can create it from the Fabricate UI. I don't need to know. Um, about Docker, I don't know. I don't need to know about Jenkins. I don't need to know how even how to create, for example, a Spring Boot or a Node.js application, because once that I click here, click here, in the create project, it will provide some templates and different technologies. But w we are in a Java conference, so let's use a Java, a Spring Boot application, right? It needs to be the hello. Let me increase the font size. Hello world service. Next. Now it has the same uh, screen that you see in the start.spring.io. You can choose the version. You can choose your dependencies. So I will use here a web dependency and a Reactuator to guarantee my he the health of the application. When I click it next, this the fabricate already created the project here in a Git server that's running inside uh, OpenShift that was provi provisioned together with fabricate. So let's see that. Gogs admin. Red hat. Oops. Red hat dollar one. Okay, you can see here I have the, the application. The next thing that Fabricate asks me is what kind of pipeline do you want to use? I have here a library of pipelines with different stages. This uh, just deploy in the testing environment. I will use this one that's most complete. I need to have my source code reach in the production. And bef before the staging, the staging in the production, I want to have a man manual approval process. So I you choose this one. I want to copy that to the project. Click next. And as you can see, that my project will be, uh, we will have another commit with the Jenkins file that controls the that pipeline at the same moment this project was also placed inside the Jenkins that's running together with fabricate so as you can see the hello world service was created and a build number one just started and let's wait for this project to have the pipeline completed. As you can see, it's a typical Java project. In this case here, that I did don't need to know about Jenkins. I don't need to know about Kubernetes. I don't know even, ah, by the way, the, the dependencies are being obtained by an internal Nexus server. So let's open. Uh, there is an internal ne Nexus service. Oh, I closed it. Sorry? Bec uh, because 
inside the POM XML of this application, there is uh, a definition of this Nexus repo. Yeah. For Node.js projects, uh, I guess there there will be an internal Node.js server. So, okay, it's running here, but we need to make some changes in this project. So let's check out this project here. Projects, Java one, git clone, it cloned. I can open this project in my IDE. I can see, uh, sorry, the, the font's a little bit small, but you can see that's a typical Spring Boot application. And what I need to do now is implement the Hello World. Instead of typing everything, what I will do is cheat a little bit. I will deploy uh, the code using a script. Okay, we can s let's refresh our our IDE, and now you can see that I have a REST API that will expect the hello and the name. Let's see what's happening with our build. The build now is waiting for a, an approval. I don't want to send that version to, to the production. It was already deployed here in the staging. So let's not approve that. Let's abort the build number one. We can also verify here that inside OpenShift, uh, th that Hello World version one was deployed in the staging. I also don't want to have that in the staging, so I will delete that. And what I want is that version that I just created. So I don't need to build it locally. I just need to commit that. So let's add, git status, git add the POM XML and the source. Let's commit my code. Added code. And let's push that to the origin. Once that I committed, you can see that in a few seconds, Jenkins will detect that and we, it will start, start automatically the build number two. Let's, okay, we have here the build number two running. We can also see that the changes that I did is now inside GOGS, there is, there is my commit here. The build is running inside Jenkins, but you can see also inside fa the Fabricate console. And let's wait for this build. As you can see here, the, I deleted the, the staging environment. And once that this pipeline wants to deploy the application in the pipeline, it will recreate the staging environment for me with this version. While, uh, while it's building, I want to use the opportunity to verify if you have any questions. Okay, running the integration testing because something that all, every pipeline needs to have is a, a, a testing. How do you guarantee that at the least the basic features are working? Sorry? Yeah, in, in this case here, it's just a, a place mark for integration tests. There is no real test implemented, but it, 
that shows to you that at that place mark, you should implement the, your integration tests. So now it's waiting to approval. The, um, the staging environment was created. Let's approve that to go to the production. Let me. Okay, proceed. Now note here that it created the version 102 in production. We can open the production environment here and see that the Hello world, world service is being deployed. And we can even open the pod here to see the, the container starting. It's a, th that Spring Boot application. We can follow the logs. And let's wait for this application to become available so we can finally test and see that our uh, front end is working. Let me open here. Let, let me get the hello world. Logs. Follow. It takes a, a while to deploy. But let's try it. Rafael, test one. Oh, it's working. So I got the, the result from my application. And that application, as you can see, as, as you saw, was created without any interaction directly with Kubernetes. The Jenkins pipeline uh, were crea was created automatically for you. The Nexus server was provisioned for you. The GitHub server, I just need to check out my code, do the, the change that I need, commit that, and the build run automatically f for me. Any questions? 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 Well, this this is a, a the the question is is this running in the cloud or um, can I run that in um in in enterprise? Well, Fabricate is an open source project made for my uh, microservice. There is no 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 pro product supported for that yet. It's more a uh, project from the community, but shows that concept to create microservice environment. Um, if you want to know more about Kubernetes, I want to invite you to the Kubernetes for Java developers. Uh, it, will, it will be a three hours lab that will happen tomorrow from tw uh, 12.30 to 2.30. It will be a great opportunity to go from the very basics from Kubernetes until OpenShift. Also, don't forget to subscribe to developers.redhat.com. And if you have any feedback from this session, if you want to see or just get in touch with me, my email, my Twitter handle is Rafa Bene. I'll be very, very pleased to answer your question or hear your feedback. Thank you. Thank you.